you don't want to sleep then. I don't want you to sleep. After 10 minutes. Follow that one. I better not play, not play. I don't know, I don't play, but because I don't want to disturb the flow because I'm not going to play. So I just give you the key. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us begin the chaplet of divine mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Mortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible. Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, and welcome to the Eucharistic celebration on the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. My Lord, He died for 
kingdom to redeem the hearts of men. Now my people, don't you weep? He has risen from his sleep, he lives again. Alleluia, sing alleluia, the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. My Lord came forth like the morning with the slander of the sun. Came triumphant from the womb, from the darkness of the tomb, the victory won. Alleluia, sing Alleluia, the Lord is risen, He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Sing Alleluia, the Lord is risen, He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Good morning, dear friends in Christ. Good morning, Father. And welcome to the celebration today, the Feast of the Divine Mercy. We take a few moments in silence before we begin our Eucharistic celebration, calling to mind those moments in our lives when we felt close to God, we felt His mercy in our lives. Also, we take a few moments in silence to bring all our intentions to Him in a very special way today. Lift up to the Father the tireless efforts of all our doctors, our nurses, our medical care persons, all those who are in one way or another involved in this fight with all of us, this war against COVID-19. We remember all of them today. A few moments in silence. We bring them into our celebration of the Eucharist. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy, Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So, brothers, sisters, as we are called to be merciful ourselves, to follow Jesus, to follow the Father's mercy, we call to mind those moments in our lives when we were not merciful towards others in those littlest things, the smallest things. And we ask the Lord for His pardon and for His mercy for these moments of our weaknesses and we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. people 
of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightfully understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His love has no end. 
Give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord for His good. For His love has no end. I was stressed down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my soul. He was my Savior. Shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His love has no stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the joys and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His love A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or sold and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which had been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honor. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still, without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe, and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, 
the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered. Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. And he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, just a few moments, a brief moment on this homily. We will begin with the biblical background and then we will find some teaching to reflect on in the person of Thomas in our lives. So, as a biblical background, this post-resurrection appearances of Jesus are recorded in all the four Gospels, all four. This event, however, is mentioned today very briefly in Mark's Gospel. And 
Mark has Jesus appear in Jerusalem to his disciples. In Matthew, this post-resurrection appearances of Jesus to his disciples happens not in Jerusalem, but at the Sea of Galilee, way up north, and we have that in chapter 28 of Matthew's Gospel. Luke, however, in chapter 24, has it back again in Jerusalem. And next Sunday, we will have this amazing story, this beautiful story of these two disciples walking away from Jerusalem to Emmaus. We will find that next week. So Luke has this to say to us. It is a remarkable gospel, Luke. Yes, certain things that are mentioned in Luke that are not mentioned in any other of the three Gospels. For instance, Luke has Jesus showing them his hand, hands and his feet. The wounds on his hands and his feet. He also has, Luke, Luke also has Jesus appearing to his disciples and his disciples are afraid, they think it's a ghost. And Jesus has a meal with them to ensure them that he is real. That's in Luke's Gospel. When we get to John's Gospel in today's event, he doesn't show them his hands and his feet. He shows them his hands and his side. Why? Why? Because in the previous chapter in John's Gospel, we have the incident where the soldier pierces the side of Jesus with a spear. We have that. And therefore, the testimony of the risen Jesus is in his wounds. That's how we recognize Jesus, in his wounds. Now, John's Gospel is unique because it has Jesus breathing on his disciples the Holy Spirit. Remember that in today's Gospel. And he tells them, you are capable of forgiving sins. He tells them this, you know. So John's Gospel has this. And only in John's Gospel do we have the story we read just now about Thomas. And we are all attracted to Thomas, you know. We are all attracted to him. Doubting Thomas, we call him. Somehow, somewhere, every one of us identifies with this person, the doubting Thomas. The person who is uncertain. So let us take a look at Thomas as he appears in today's Gospel and as he appears to us in our lives. So brothers, sisters, we, we live in an age where we question everything, many things. An age where people ask questions. An age where people ask and demand answers. I feel the greatest challenge today for the church, the leadership of the church, is that we are living in an age of an educated lady, not being afraid to ask questions about what's happening in the church. We are living in an age of transparency. It's a time for all leaders throughout the world, in all institutions, to be accountable. This is a time we live. Unlike the generations before, where we just accepted whatever was said. Today, we tend to question things. We identify with Thomas because Thomas was uncertain. We are uncertain about certain things in life. And a strange paradox, 
to be certain is an act of faith which requires great courage an act of faith which requires great courage so let's talk about that let's look at it when we question things in the church and we are not sure about certain things in the olden days we will say your faith is weak but today we say you are growing in faith because you want to understand things there's an extract of the teaching of pope francis he says this about uncertainty i'll read to you he says this in this quest to seek and to find god in all things there is still an area of uncertainty this must be he says if a person says he has met god with total certainty and is not touched by a margin of uncertainty this is not good because for francis says it is an important key if one has the answer to all the questions that proves that god is not with him it means he is a false prophet using religion for himself the great leaders of the people of god like moses have always left room for doubt you must leave room for the lord not for our certainties we must be humble we must always be open to the breath of god's spirit leading us to new things the pope says this the pope not every question has an answer not every problem has a solution great frustration anxiety happens to us at times when we insist on an answer when we demand a solution to every problem it is far more easier to solve a problem than to live with a problem it is far more difficult to search deep inside ourselves in a moment of uncertainty to wonder where does this questions all come from and not to settle for a false answer or a partial solution certainty is not the ultimate sign of faith uncertainty to live without the answer immediately coming to us to live without a solution to a problem immediately is to walk in powerlessness to walk in helplessness to surrender to Jesus Christ and to allow the breath of the spirit to guide us never fear the question never avoid the problem that does not have an answer never avoid a, never avoid a problem that does not have a solution follow jesus christ in his wounds for this is his testimony the cross is not meant to be conquered the cross is meant to be carried and that is why jesus tells us always carry my cross not conquer the cross so brothers and sisters uncertainty is a strange way reveals to us our act of faith of courage and that was thomas for all we know the other disciples had the same questions but did not have the courage to ask like thomas 
brothers and sisters anxiety does not come from the lack of certainty anxiety comes from the fact that i must be certain that's where anxiety comes from lastly let us take a look on the breath of jesus spirit to his disciples how will we know when you are given the breath of the spirit how will we know that how will we know when we are moved by the spirit of jesus how will we know that firstly we will be virtuous in our lives we will try to be secondly we will be courageous in our faith we will try to be thirdly we will hold with whole hard and harsh judgments on our neighbor we will try to do that and fourthly we will include people in our lives and we will try to do that that my dear friends means to walk in the spirit of god and to be moved by the spirit of jesus okay all right So let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. begotten not made consubstantial with the father through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So brothers sisters let us bring into the presence of our father all our intentions. For holy mother church that despite the challenges of social distancing and closed sanctuaries she will continue to become a beacon of peace and hope led by the spirit's guidance for our pope bishops and priests as they persevere in their duty of shepherding the flock on earth lord, lord hear, hear us. us lord, lord, lord graciously hear us. us for our country malaysia that our leaders will govern this nation with integrity and justice in making wise and sound decisions to protect the people and place special care for the needy and vulnerable during this time of pandemic lord hear us lord graciously hear us for those afflicted by the covid-19 pandemic May they draw strength and healing from the unconditional love of our Lord and may those frontliners medical and security officers entrusted towards battling the sickness be protected in their noble duty Lord hear us Lord graciously hear us for our RCIA elect that despite not being able to receive the sacraments of initiation they will continue to build a personal relationship with the risen lord 
and rejoice with joy in his triumph and victory over sin and sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us viewing this online Mass, that our hearts will be converted through this Easter season as we continue to be spiritually united as a community of faith and love, embracing God's infinite mercy despite our struggles and challenges. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our personal needs and intentions. So, brothers and sisters, let me bring our personal needs into the presence of our Father, into the presence of Jesus. Let us take our time, a few moments of silence. We bring to Jesus, into the Father's presence, all that is deep in our hearts, things we can't understand, things that are so uncertain for us. We bring to Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Together with all the intentions that we have had mentioned and the ones that are deep in our hearts, we want to bring to Jesus as well the intentions of those who are in the front lines, in a special way, all those who are in the healthcare those are helping us in one way to prevent this pandemic from growing. We want to keep them and their families in our prayer today. Also, those who are monitoring the safety around us, the police, the military everyone we want to bring you and your families into the eucharist today we also bring to the table of the lord to the presence of our father those who have experienced death in their families We pray for you. And we lift up to the Father all those who have died. And we ask Mary, our mother, the mother of Jesus, to intercede for us, for our, for our land, for our country, for the world. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace. grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, O oh, Father, we are yours, we are yours. Yours as we stand at the table, you said, yours as we eat the bread our hearts can't forget. 
We are the sign of your life with us yet. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread. We ask you take our hearts. We love you. Take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Your holy people standing washed in your blood. Spirit fill yet hungry, we await for your food. We are poor, but we've brought ourselves the best that we could. We are yours, we are yours. Take our bread, we ask you take our hearts. We love you, take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that the renewed, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's really right and just. Our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and is rising the life to of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glorious day acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, ever and above full of your glory. O Son of in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew form, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Sebastian our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We are married to be co-heirs to each other life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
we address our Father, the merciful Father. We call God our Father. And we remember also all those who are unable to celebrate the Eucharist for what reason whatsoever. We remember them. And together, as children of the Father, with Jesus, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord is always with you. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold, Jesus, the mercy of the Father. Behold, Jesus, the divine mercy, the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and the sins of all the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal.
Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails and do not be unbelieving but believing. Alleluia. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through this Easter celebration and in His compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may He who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of your only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion has drawn to a close May you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, we pray for good and peace. Peace all over the land. May all men dwell in liberty, walking hand in hand. Banish fear and ignorance, hunger, thirst, and pain. Oh, mm -hmm.